Well, hello, hello again, folks. Ryan once again with the Cactus Con crew. I'm here with Red Hat August and the Fish Seven. I don't know if he actually pronounces it. Do you pronounce it that way? I'm, now I'm going to because I just made that joke out there. <laughs> the Fish Seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, fellas, for being with us today, and thank you, of course, for your talk. Um, we'll get into that moment momentarily. First up, some prize stuff, some giveaway stuff. We had some winners just announced. So we've got uh, Downgrade and Nabonidus. Nabonidus. I should have practiced that before. <laughs> and Danger Noodle. Nice. Uh, congratulations. We will be in contact shortly, whenever shortly actually is. And let's go ahead and give out some additional prizes. In the last round, um, I did not give out enough of the vouchers. So we're just going to do that right now. Live on the air. And boom, there we go. So um, we've got Gizmo, Kludgebot, and HDZ with $20 vouchers for No Starch Press. Again, thank you to No Starch Press as an in-kind sponsor. Heck yeah, we really appreciate that. Those Ted Demopoulos books, uh, they are signed. They will be going out to you folks who won them. So again, just, you know, we'll be in contact. All right, so before we get going here with the questions, uh, Red Hat August, I believe you have something you wanted to add. Yeah, so I just wanted to let everybody know, uh, I kind of made a little bit of a nooblet mistake in the video. Uh, I put vagrant remove and that's it. It's the command would actually be vagrant box remove and then you have to specify the box. So I don't want people who are using this uh, to end up like, you know, filling up their hard drive when they're trying to remove it or freaking out when that command doesn't work. Uh, we'll put it in the readme just for clarification. But again, I made a mistake, wanted to come forward with that and clarify what it's supposed to be. So just stay tuned for the readme on that. Awesome. Thank you for that. A uh, little note here. I, I thought it was, you know, just absolutely fantastic project and talk concerning the project. I personally am not a red teamer at all. I mean, I already mentioned this in a couple of QAs. Before. Like, all right, we get it, dude. You're a blue teamer. Shut up. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I love trying to pretend like I'm a red teamer. And every once in a while, you know, I still go back to like Metasploitable 2, you know, <laughs> from like 2009. <laughs> I don't know what year that came out. You know, sure. um, I keep popping pro FT FTPD and thinking I'm awesome. <laughs> So having uh, this easy method to just ta -da, spin up boxes is awesome. I love the use of Vagrant to bring stuff up and bring it down when needed. There's a, a group, West Mech. Hopefully there's some West Mechers out there watching right now, the Western Maricopa Education Group. Um, they do some great training for folks on the, uh, well, the west side of the valley, hence the name. Uh, some extension training, some adult training, and a lot of concurrent enrollment for high schoolers. They were teaching Vagrant to their, uh, you know, 16 to 18 range, I believe, kiddos back like even four or five years ago. I remember going over there the first time and the, the kids were like, you know, Vagrant up and, and bringing boxes up and down. And I'm like, I work with people who don't, <laughs> who don't know how to do that. So yeah, I just, I, I love, I love that inclusion. Great, great job overall. So we have a couple questions for you. One, and it's been answered, but we're going to go ahead and ask it and make sure everyone is aware, is essentially, is the project, is it available? Is it open? Is it public? And essentially, where can I find it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as the video had it, you would just go to my GitHub and uh, vulnhub underscore vagrant. You'd want to clone that in. As I put in the video, um, you'd have to install VirtualBox, the VirtualBox extension pack, and vagrant. I do encourage you install Git too, because I'm just a command line junkie. Uh, so you'd clone it in. You go into the directory and you do vagrant up. Uh, it is free, as in um, you know, free beer which is great, uh, such as VulnHub has always been since 2004. Uh, everybody has access to these machines, always has, uh, ever since its creation, you know, hence got Milk's point of putting it out in the world. Uh, however, through my experience of starting out and remembering what that was like, I just wanted to make it a little bit more accessible as in setting up the machines, because uh, some of them you can kind of have issues with getting them to work. Uh, so I'm trying to get all that done up front. So again, you just have to run the command and everything is good. And you also don't have to worry about, oh, I need to go get VMware versus VirtualBox or, you know, Hyper-V or what, what have you, right? So, yep, it's like free. It. Just hit the GitHub. 
I like it. I like it. And another question for you here. And this question, we, we talked about it offline. We'll see where we go with this. Is there any way to set up and then essentially to remote in, such as in a classroom setting, so a shared infrastructure, if you will? Right. So um, to address this question, the way that I designed the project is really to be on the host itself, right? Uh, the intent was somebody's going to be going in their own computer, and I uh, made that internal network a requirement for VirtualBox. That means there's no internet access from both your attacker host and uh, the virtual machine. You know, just in case somebody's a little bit nervous about pulling in an exploitable machine, there might be something on it, they're worried about that. It's literally going to lock it down so it doesn't even have access to the host. However, with that being said, uh, if you wanted to change the network of the vulnerable machine to maybe bridged and you had it as an internal setup for your classroom, you pull them all into a central server, that's how I do it in my class, right? Uh, however, that does mean that you would need a, some type of access, maybe a VPN to get into the classroom to be able to hit those machines on that server. So it is definitely possible, but it will take a little bit more manipulation and... Um, you know, uh, finesse on your part, depending on how your network is set up, how you wanted to deliver it. Uh, whoever asked that question, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, um, you know, and we can we can kind of clarify that out. Uh, of course, doing the whole VPN thing, I'm going to leave that out of scope for me. That would be for you to figure out. But if everybody's in the same classroom, and you have like a bunch of uh, student computers who are accessing it. That's how I do it. Um, so I, I could make that shift really, really quick. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any questions immediately in the chat right now. Anything that either of you fellows would like to share with the group? Any, you know, commentary? What you what you got? You're on the spot. Uh, yeah, sure. One one thing that I want to do is I want to give a shout out to Dion Zeller. Uh, you know, uh, something in the GitHub that I want to make clear is I have a folder called Other, right? He's the only machine that I have in there so far. Uh, but his uh, server, YoBlog, was one of the very first servers that I ever hacked into and what I learned from. So I highly recommend that. Go check it out. You're going to learn about LFI. You're going to learn um, you know, how to get into uh, servers. You're going to learn a little bit about database uh, exfiltration and whatnot. A really cool machine. Go into other. Check out YoBlog. It's outside of VulnHub. Uh, and then another thing is if there are any uh, exploit machine developers out there that want to give me, uh, you know, the machine to throw into the project, reach out, you know, I'll throw you in the other if you're not on VulnHub uh, so we can grow this thing and really make it, again, accessible for our newbies who, you know, we're going to try to level up, right? Absolutely fantastic. Uh, a note about that box, the YoBlog. I see here in the description on GitHub, this machine was used in the CactusCon oh, root the box competition <laughs> in 2016. That's right. That's I love right. it. Put on I by early it. warning. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Early warning, by the way, who's one of our partner sponsors and has a, a chat room that you should go check out. <laughs> very cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's anything else you want to throw in, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And um, yeah, thank you both very, very much. Again, awesome, awesome project. Uh, I was going to ask about how you're going to maintain uh, to avoid stale boxes and then realize that, that you don't need to. I mean, you can essentially, you know, um, I'm still messing with Metasploitable too, like I said. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's huge. There's a... Uh... Last time I checked, because um, the last time they were updated was December 15th of 2020, uh, there were 624 in all. I have on VulnHub 209 of them finished, uploaded, ready to go. I'm working from the newest one and going to the oldest ones. Uh, I got a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to talk with Got Milk later on to see kind of what the future of VulnHub is, if it's going to keep going, if my project has a definitive close date. But like I said, if there's people who are making uh, exploitable machines that are outside of VulnHub and you want to keep adding to the flow, just hit me up and, and we'll get it up there, you know? Awesome. And I have to ask you before we leave here, I see that you have a whole bunch of Rubik's Cubes behind you. Do you have yeah. one? Do you have one of the connected cubes? One of the no, no, no. <laughs> I got the uh, the Go Cube, um, 
and then I connected when Rubik's actually, you know, got into it and they're pretty nifty, especially for someone who is horrible at them. So I assume you're probably better given. Oh, your- <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I like puzzles. They're, they're fun to fiddle with, but you yeah. know, there's always someone better. <laughs> All right. Well, Red Hat August and the Vish 7, thank you very, very much for your talk and for that project. It's really a great project. Everyone go check it out on GitHub. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and kick off the next giveaway. The next giveaway coming up is learning Python for forensics. Leverage the power of Python and forensic investigations. This is a digital book by Chapin Bryce. He's a coworker of mine. He works also on our team, BlackBerry Security Services IR. BlackBerry, of course, is a partner of ours. They have a chat room. Go check them out. I'm going to initiate that little sucker right now. Dun, da, da, da. And there we go. So everyone go ahead and put in for that. This is officially our lunch half hour, if you will. So we have our next talk starting in about 28 minutes, and we'll see you all then. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.